not entirely truthful. Uh, so, just name something that you weren't always good at. You know, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I don't remember being bad at anything. <laughs> um, so you made it up. Yeah. So I, encourage your child to make things up if she doesn't know it. Ready? Yeah. This is very important advice. But realistically, though, like I didn't claim to be bad at math and then become like this junior like astronaut or something like that. Knowing astronaut, no. That that's one. That's completely not true. That's not me. That's not my personality, and it's just not believable. So I picked something that I am interested in. I'm interested in art. I'm interested in drawing. And while sixth grade me like wasn't really such an artist, I still made a lot of improvements. So I thought, okay, so this is something that I like to do. This is my hobby. Um, wasn't something that you know I wasn't. Like, maybe I was bad at it, but I wasn't really discouraged from it. But how do I turn that into an essay? So my essay, I wrote that in elementary school, there was a project where we needed to draw like an artwork, like copy it from one of the masters or something like that. I picked Mona Lisa and then it turned out really bad. And some kids said it looks like the scream. And then his friend said, well, it looks like Lisa's Mona. So, <laughs> so, the, so the picture was so bad that someone else insulted it. Yeah. So, and then from there I said, you know what, I don't like that, I'm going to improve. And then after initially being discouraged by that negative comment or series of negative comments, I said, okay, I'm going to write this, or rather, I'm going to draw this wonderful picture and I kept improving and right now art is a hobby that I really enjoy and that was my essay. Uh, for my essay, I, I didn't have, you know, write the, the pre-planned essay from Queller. Uh, what I did was when I was going through the essays that I was graded on, I looked at the structure because I knew that, you know, if, if I had to recreate something on the spot, if I followed, like, the outline, it would be easier. Uh, when I made the thing up, I picked something that was, you know, I felt passionate about so I could write about it, but I also, it wasn't completely truthful. So it was some, write something you're afraid of. Um, and I, I said I was afraid of skiing and that my entire family was like, you know, they were, they were pros and I was the only person who was, who was afraid of, you know, skiing with them. So I'd be on the, on the sidelines watching them having fun, which wasn't true because I was actually, you know, doing double black diamond and they were like all on the green slopes. But, um, I, I was, I, I wrote about, you know, how, you know, how, how passionate I felt about it, which, you know, and I, I connected it to, uh, an experience outside of, of what I was writing about. So I said, so to overcome my fears, I, I, I would go on roller coasters and I love hypes. I love, you know, being a thousand feet in the air because I just do. But I was like, I, I did all this to overcome my fear. Um, and this will help me in life when I'm, you know, afraid of other things. And now that I've overcome one fear, I can overcome the rest. So you just want to connect it to different things. Don't keep it on one thing. But I'm hearing, even though it's a little fabricated and you're telling a story, yeah. what I'm noticing is you're answering the prompt, yeah. right? Like every paragraph that you wrote about answered the prompt. Right. Right? Yeah, but more so, it also connected back to myself. It connected back to what kind of person I was, or person I am. Um, so by picking the Mona Lisa, it's just like, oh, I like, I really was shooting for the stars. You know, I really wanted to challenge myself. That shows something about me. The fact that I wasn't discouraged, that also shows something about me. Right. The fact that I took someone's negative comment and continued, that also shows that I'm a resilient person. and. Yeah, while well, the experience was fabricated, this were touched up, I'd rather, I'd say. Um, I still think that it holds true. I still think that I do challenge myself and I do push myself. That is the kind of person that I am. And I am a person who likes art. I am a person who's been- I'm just like, I don't need to write this down. I do, I do it in my head. But here's my thing. If I do a problem and I write everything down and I get it right, and then you do a problem and you don't write anything down and you get it right, we're still getting the same amount of points, right? It's not like you're gonna get an extra points for doing it in your head. So I might as well be safe to write everything out. So for the three steps to stay organized in math, I just ask myself these three questions, and that's how I understand how to approach a problem. The first question I always ask is, what is the question asking? And that's really important. Because this has happened as well. This is, I guess, the epitome of what's known as a silly mistake. The question asks you to find out what two x is, and they did all the work, and they found out what x was. And of course, that was answer choice A. <laughs> and they were like, oh, okay, great, I got this, and they move on. But they didn't get the question right, because they didn't answer the question being asked. Which... 
And that's one of the most common, most silliest mistakes that the student can make. And for that, you lose everything, right? Because there's no partial credit. So that's why I always make sure what is the question asking, and that's when I underline it, or I circle it, or I just make a big sign. I'm saying, hey, this is what we need to find, not X. That's number one. Number two is, what do I already know, both from the problem and from prior knowledge? I'll give you an example. If we have a geometry question, right? If we have a geometry question and it's about, you know, a circle has a circumference of 12 pi, what's the area? It's a pretty simple, straightforward question. But to stay organized, I'll write this sentence down, I'll do this, and then just to be wholly sure of myself, this is what the problem gave me, and what's my prior knowledge? I need to know both of those formulas. The area of a circle is pi r squared, and the circumference of a circle is pi times And there's no guessing penalty, yeah. so you can answer all the questions. So definitely a bubble in everything every, on the screen. Every single thing yeah, bubble. Every single thing. So if you're a very good eyesight writer, and you guess throughout the whole test and ends up being very lucky and getting everything correct, they could be letting somebody who, who only is good at essays and sucks at everything else into the school. No, they can't because the multiple choice is what comes first. You don't get a 64% and up from Yeah, but what if you're very lucky? So, so I just want to remind, Ben was going to remind you with how the exam rubric works. Mm -hmm. um, first comes the multiple choice. You have to score a certain amount in the multiple choice. Mm -hmm. So about 70%, right, right Wu? Yeah, so once you hit that 70% on the actual test, that's when they take a look at your essay. So remember that it's important to do well in the multiple choice because if you don't hit that standard that Hunter's looking for, they won't look at your essay, but if you do hit that standard, which hopefully everyone does, they take a look at your essay, they judge it based off of grammar, vocabulary, organization, answering the prompt just like how we grade you guys here. Yeah. If you, like, hit the standard, yeah. and, like, they check your test, what would be, like, the, like, the lowest grade you could get for your test? On the multiple choice? No, that, for the writing. Uh, on the writing, that's more of a subjective scale. There's so a that's, rubric. There's a rubric. There right that are grading each of your uh, essays but as opposed to like the multiple choice where there's a 70% uh, standard before you get uh, uh, for the cutoff there's less of that for the essay so that's m mainly based on the grammar the vocabulary and the organization so we're gonna wish you guys very good luck and a round of applause to all of you your champions we are so proud good luck good luck good luck good luck thank you for being here New Year's Day